Amen. Um, this morning, I have a special treat. I'm not going to do a, a long introduction because uh, I believe that you know this amazing man of God extremely well. He's preached here many times. He is the leader of our youth group, uh, part of our worship team, uh, and uh, our apprentice pastor himself, uh, Uriah, is going to be preaching this morning. Give Uriah a big SCC round of applause. Praise God. Praise God. How we doing, family? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let's take a moment and just thank Pastor Isaac again for the opportunity to just talk about my favorite person in the world. His name is Jesus. He's amazing. And um, he's why we're here, right? Um, also, I want to give a, just another shout out to my brother, Anthony, who just shared his testimony. Um, man, what, a, what an example of just the beauty of being in relationship with God. And we're, he, he brings us from dark places into light and transforms us. And so that's my brother. I love him. And uh, so excited for what God's doing in his life. And whew, let's talk. Um, we're going to dive real quick into scripture. We're going to read a little bit. I'm going to give you just a bit. And then we're going we're gonna to talk about some things, okay? We're going to start with uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 22. Starting at verse 1. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. We're going to stop right there. I know it's a little crazy. <laughs> I'm going to explain. Um, this, the message today that I'm going to be talking about is about knowing God, right? Um, I believe it's so important to know him, to know his character, to know uh, his promises over your life. I, I think it's so important just to know him as in, in relationship, right? Um, I'm going to talk, I'm, I'm going to give you share a little story about a ne- one of my nephews. I have a Back in California, I have a lot of nephews. Every time I'm up here, I got to talk a little bit about my family. Um, they have such a big part um, in who I am and who I've become, right? Um, so one of my nephews, his name is Peyton. He's a twin. Um, when him and his brother was born, uh, his older brother, Portland, was a little bit like, a little bit chunky, a little bit more like, you know, he's just a little chunky baby. And everybody wanted to pick him up and carry him around. Peyton was a little bit more on the skinny side. He was a little bit more, uh, he had a, a lot of eczema on his face. So like, a lot of people were like a little nervous to, to, to carry him because he looked a little bit more fragile than his brother did. So Portland, I, I watched, he, Portland got used to being carried so much while Peyton, I would just watch him and he would be sitting in his car seat and he would just be enjoying life like, I believe the Lord was just speaking to him, and he would just enjoy life whether nobody was paying attention to him or not. You know what I mean? Um, I took that opportunity to actually, when he would be in his car seat, to go sit in front of him, and I I just began speaking to him and um, began, you know, making faces at him, having just having time with my nephew. And he was just the the most, he was the easiest baby to entertain because everything I did, he would smile, he would laugh, he would enjoy himself, he would have this, like, really cute toothless grin, you know what I mean? So as uh, time went on, Peyton and I just grew closer. I would, some, some days I would go to work at night and I would come back to uh, our house in the morning and I would go and like fall asleep right on the floor in our living room. When his sisters would wake up, they would bring him out and literally just, just plop him right next to me wherever I was sleeping. And he would literally just sit there, crawl around on me until I woke up. And we would spend time together as soon as I woke up and all the way till then. So that was about 13 years ago, right? And now we're, um, we're in a space where, the, the, geez, the boy is like, he's about 13 years old now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I saw him actually uh, recently when I, went, when I went out to California. And when I saw him, there, even though there had been time that had passed between us, I wasn't with him every day. We would talk sometimes on the phone. The relationship that we had, like it's, like, it's like we haven't missed a beat, right? As soon as I see him, I get that same, uh, what used to be a toothless grin, now a full set of teeth, a beautiful smile. He's 
<laughs> the kids, he's actually now really big and like a little bit more muscular than his older brother. Um, the kid loves to play. But there's um, the relationship we have is still there. And even when we, when we were in, the reason I was out there, we were in a dark time of uh, just heartbreak, having lost someone that we loved. Peyton knew he, he has many uncles, he has many aunts there, but the person he came running to was me. He came in, 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 in the space where he was the most heartbroken, he was weeping, he was crying. He puts his head in my chest and begins to weep. And I'm like, the Lord is speaking to, the Lord is speaking to me through these memories because it's like, if, if the heart that I have for, for this child, for this nephew of mine, the, how much I love him, how much I want to be there for him, how much I desire to um, be a safe place for him, I can't imagine how much more God wants to be that for me. You know what I'm saying? How much more God loves me. God loves all of us, right? And he's, I love uh, what my brother Anthony brought up, uh, the, the description of First Corinthians. The first two points is that the Lord is patient, the Lord is kind. He, he knows us, right? He, he knows the, the very number of hairs on our head, yet he takes the time to walk out this relationship with us. And he, he's got time. <laughs> he's, he's outside of it. He's like, he's like this, as long as it takes, I, I have no problem to, you know, doing relationship with you and giving you an opportunity to know me. Let's go back to the, the word. I want to talk a, talk a little bit about Abraham and give some context to what I just read earlier, right? Um, and actually, you guys are all getting a bit of a treat because you guys are getting a sneak peek into what Pastor Isaac and I have been studying for the last month, right? And we've been um, just taking this scripture, these scriptures piece by piece, and uh, it was, it's just so beautiful to see Abraham's life um, and then to study it together. So we're going to start about, I'm going to explain a little bit who Abraham is, right? Abraham was, have you guys heard the song, Father Abraham, his many sons, you know the song? So what's going on? The, uh, he is our, Father Abraham is a father because he's, the, he's literally the very beginning of the nation of Israel. He's the, he's the family, the bloodline that the Lord chose to, end, to ultimately bring his son Jesus through, right? Um, through, through trials and tribulations, through relationship over, <laughs> over many, many, many years, eventually he brought Jesus through the line that started with Abraham. But it started with this. It started with relationship, right? Uh, Abraham was, a, was part of a, a, a different country, a different people, and the Lord called him out of that to start his own relationship with the Lord. And ultimately, the first thing, so when the Lord calls him, he says, he tells Abraham, he tells Abraham to leave everything uh, that he knows, everything, his, his family, his people, leave them behind and go off on your own. And the first thing that Abraham does is he listens and obeys, right? And then by doing that, the Lord makes him this, this beautiful promise. And he says that he will make him a great nation, uh, that he will uh, make his descendants as numerous as the stars, and anyone who blesses him will be blessed, and anyone who curses him will be cursed, right? That's heavy words. So the first thing that Abraham knows of this God, of this God who's calling him away, is that this God is, uh, makes big promises, right? And thus began Abraham's life with, with the Lord. He went through, um, mind you, actually, let me back up for a second. He started this journey at 75 years old. So, you know what? A little, just a little encouragement there. For a lot of you think uh, it's too late to start something. Uh, no. <laughs> as, long as, as long as you woke up this morning, the Lord's got a plan for your life, right? So, we got this. Um, so, we start this journey, and the Lord takes him away to these different lands, and he, he, he makes him a, you know, a, a, wealthy, a wealthy man. Uh, the Lord shows up in in ways where Abraham actually uh, lies to, to a couple kings. And the Lord, it was like, and when, when he lies to a couple kings, the Lord shows up, doesn't defend the lies that Abraham made, but he brings, the Lord brings forth truth and still protects Abraham. So the Lord, so Abraham also now knows that, wow, my God is merciful and he loves me and he's going to protect me, right? Then he makes this beautiful covenant. One of my favorite parts about the, the story between Abraham and the Lord um, this, this covenant where he has 
the he has Abraham take all these uh, these these animals, right, uh, different animals, and he cuts them in half, puts one side of the carcass on one side, puts the other side of the carcass on the other side, uh, a couple of birds he puts on either side, and the part of the, this covenant is that uh, both the Lord and, and Abraham are supposed to walk through this uh, through the pathway together, and when you do, if, um, if both don't keep their side of the covenant, you're going to be like this be like these carcasses that are on each side. But what the Lord does, it's really beautiful. He puts Abraham to sleep. And the Lord walks through this covenant by himself. Basically showing that whatever Abraham, there's things that Abraham can't do. The Lord's going to fulfill this promise that both of them are making by himself. Right? Um, think about this scripturally. There's a scripture in, uh, in the Bible where he says, where the Lord tells us that he will never give us more than we can handle, and he will provide a way out. This is something, this covenant that he was making with Abraham is something that Abraham couldn't handle, so the Lord walked it through, right? Now, going through um, more, of the, more of their life, Abraham had many more encounters with the Lord. Um, Abraham was promised a son um, in his old age. By, uh, he, was called? His son, he, the, the Lord promised that him and his wife, Sarah, were going to have a son. Forgive me. And even in their old age, although Abraham had been through this, uh, through many of these, you know, trials with the Lord, this, 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 this promise was made, and, and he believed it. He's like, okay, cool. But somewhere along the way, um, as we do, us as human beings, uh, Sarah, his, Sarah, his wife, became... Like, I, I, it happens where sometimes we don't believe God and we, and we end up, you know what, let's try to make this happen our way, right? So Sarah actually brings forth uh, one of her servant girls. It's just here. Has, has her husband sleep with her, with her servant girl. You'll give, give her a son and we'll have a family that way. Thus, uh, Abraham's first son was actually Ishmael. But this was not the promise that the Lord had made to Abraham. The Lord made a promise that Abraham and his wife Sarah we're going to have a, we're going to have a child, and he was going to start. He was going to start a line through them, right? So, still, the Lord in His great mercy, this this son comes. Um, Abraham loves his son, but unfortunately, this brings drama amongst the family. Uh, so much so that uh, it, it, well, I'm going to put that right there. This this brings drama, right? as we all know. So, in the midst of all that, another is situation that's happening where. Abraham sees um, sees the Lord and actually goes to meet with him. And the Lord doesn't have to do this, but the Lord actually shared with Abraham this plan that he had for this nation called Sodom and Gomorrah, who was very sinful, very, uh, it was just a bad place to be living at the time. And the Lord basically shared with Abraham, look, there's a lot going on there. I'm going to have to take care of that, you know? <laughs> and Abraham who had now had cultivated this relationship with the Lord, began to ask the Lord, Lord, if there, but, you know, if there was 50 righteous men in Sodom and Gomorrah, you wouldn't destroy them now. You wouldn't destroy the whole nation, the whole city because of, like, with those 50 people, right? And he's like, no, I would save the 50 righteous people. And then Abraham decided to ask again, okay, well, now that we got that out of the way, if you were, if there were 40 righteous people, you wouldn't destroy them, right? No, I would, I would save the 40 righteous people. And then he, Abraham kept asking and kept asking, kept asking. And then ultimately where the Lord was, where the Lord and Abraham were conversing and, and talking, this uh, beautiful thing where I think Abraham realized how, how merciful God is, you know, that even if there were, he got the number from 50 all the way down to 10. Even if there were 10 righteous people in this sinful city, the Lord would save those people, right? And what's beautiful about that is Abraham's nephew, Lot, lived in that city. And the Lord honored Abraham by saving his nephew and his family, most of his family, uh, were able to make it out of the city because of his mercy, right? Now, going forward, bringing it back to Ishmael, ultimately the son, um, ultimately the son that the Lord promised Abraham finally comes through. Now we have uh, Isaac, right? Um, 
We have Isaac, who was people who came through uh, Abraham and his wife Sarah. Now we have we have another issue that there is still Ishmael here, and there's still and, and there's Isaac, but there's still drama in the camp. So Sarah tells Abraham, send send this uh, send Ishmael and his and, and her and his mother away. And Abraham, who's obviously torn as a father who loves both of his sons, goes and pleads with the Lord that the Lord would still bless his son Ishmael. And the Lord, in his mercy, even though this, um, even though this son was born out of God's plan, God still blessed Ishmael and made him a great nation as well, right? Going forward, <laughs> now this Abraham has his son. Abraham also now knows God is merciful, God is kind, God makes promises, but he also keeps them. And now he sees, um, he, he knows anything that the Lord asks is for, is for my good, right? Now we come to this point in scripture, Abraham 22, where God asks Abraham to do something completely um, heart-wrenching, right? Let's go on. Let's read and see what happens. We're going to start at verse 3. Early the next morning. Abraham got up, loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Point right there. God told him to do. God told him to do this very heart wrenching thing. Abraham knows God has faith. He says, "We're going to go and worship, and we're going to come back to you." Right? Verse six. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he placed himself, carried the fire and the knife, as the two of them went on together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, "Father, yes, my son." Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here. Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. I want to make this point. Pastor Isaac pointed this out in our study. He said, it's funny when God called him to do this thing, he only had to tell him once. But when he had to call him to, tell him to, to, to get him to stop, he had to tell him twice. I think in that point where when you're trying to do what God's telling us to do, even though it's hard, I think I, I like to even think that sometimes like Abraham was worried that it was even his own voice that he was hearing, and he had to be convinced so much that the Lord had to call him a second time to get him to stop. Now, let's keep going. Here I am, he replied. The Lord says, do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in, there in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of cities, of the cities of their enemies. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servants and they set off together for Beersheba and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. So... I love this thing that the Lord says where he says, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son whom you love. I think it's such a significant thing that God, who is a father, who asked 
a father, Abraham, to give up his only son. But come to find out, it was never his son that the Lord was after. It was actually his heart. He was actually there to make, he wanted to know, I'm going to give my son up for, for the world. And I want to make sure that the family that I'm choosing to bring my son through understands what that means as a father. That that, 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 that family that I'm choosing understands exactly what I'm willing to do for them. Because ultimately, as he, as he did in the first covenant, the Lord ultimately walked this out and brought us back into relationship with the father because because of Jesus, but it started here with Abraham. Amen? I want to, I want to bring up this, um, this memory of this, this, one of the treasure, the treasure memories I have in my life. Um, a lot of you know who've heard me preach before uh, know that I had a brother who, who passed away, I think we're at like 17 years ago now. Um, in, on this side of heaven, the person that was closest to in the world was my little brother. His name was Sebastian. He had autism. He couldn't communicate, but he had no, we had no problem communicating, if you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? So there was uh, this time in our lives where I had gone, on, gone to live with my father for a few months, and I had not, and at that point in time, I didn't see my brother for about five months, right? When I left, I had, I had a, I, had a, I was like 16, I had a little bit of a goatee coming out, I had a, I had a, I had a mustache, and I had a big old head, I had like an afro. Um, I was real crazy with my hair back then, <laughs> and, and um, then when I, but through those six months, I, I played two very uh, grueling sports, football and wrestling, therefore I lost a lot of weight, I was probably about 40 pounds lighter than I was when he last saw me, and when I came to, when we actually came back to visit, and I saw him, we, I stepped in the door, and my brother looks at me, now, again, 40 pounds lighter, I'm clean shaven. My hair is completely short. I look completely different than I did before. And my brother looks at me and he stares at me, he stares me in the eyes, stares like right into my soul. And he looks at me and he's like, and he begins to smile because even though so much had changed here, he could still see me. I'm bringing that, I'm sharing that with you because this is how much, this is the opportunity we have to know the Lord so much. We have this opportunity that every day we get to wake up, we get to wake up to days that were never promised to us before, and we get to know the Lord a little bit more, no matter what, no matter what, what promises he makes, no matter which way he appears to us, no matter which way, um, even when he asks us to do things that, that, that seem completely, out, like completely weird and, and totally out of control, when he asks us to do things, it's, it's for our good. And when you know him, and when you know his character, and when you know how much love he has for you, that he was willing to give up his son for you, then you know that no matter what, he's whatever, wherever we are weak, he's going to be strong and he's going to walk us through it. I don't know, like I've, I've never been to heaven. I, I don't know what it's going to be like, what the logistics of it all is going to be. But I know that, um, actually, I don't, I don't even know what, when it's my time to go to heaven I don't even know what I'm going to look like. I don't know if I'm going to be appear as I look now or if I'm going to appear as an old man or if I'm going to appear as a little kid. I don't know how this works, right? <laughs> but I know that when I go and I see my brother again, we're going to know each other because of the relationship we have cultivated on earth. And even more so that when I lock eyes with my Savior, that I'm going to know him. When he speaks to me, I'm going to know this is the voice that has led me out of darkness. When I, I, I don't even know if I'll be able to stand or if, I'm, if I'll be able to uh, even say anything. I'll probably just be so in awe of, of who he is. But I know that when, when I get an opportunity to embrace him, that I will, when I feel his arms around me, I will know this is the, these are the arms that held my heart together when it was broken. These are the, these are the arms that held me in the darkest moments of my life. These are the arms that held me and pulled me out of darkness and pulled me out of whatever trouble I got myself in and pulled me into his glorious light. There's safety in these arms. There's, there's safety under the sound of his voice. There's safety in him. And ultimately, where I'm, where I'm leading this, this to, I'm going to close out here. The whole, the whole reason we do this, the whole reason we, um, 
we give our lives to, to him. And uh, it's, it's, it's literally because it says, the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, he first loved us. We didn't even get to love him without him loving us first, right? This whole story was, is, is even starting at the beginning of Abraham on throughout the Bible is God's love story to us and God's way, ways of showing how much he loves us, how much he desires relationship to know us and to be known by us, right? And all that, when you read especially this story, this particular part of Abraham's story, John 3.16 makes a little bit more sense. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For I don't know where all of you are today. I know a lot of you have already made the decision uh, to believe in Jesus Christ, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that right now. Um, we can't just, just close our eyes for a moment and, and let's look to the Lord. If this is, if, any of the, if anything that I'm saying today is resonating with you and you feel uh, a tugging at your heart where you feel like the Lord is calling you, uh, just and you're ready to make that decision, go ahead and raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Thank you, guys. I see your hands. And you know what? We're, you know, we're going to do this as a church. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray. I'm gonna have, we're we're going to pray together. I'm going to say something. You're going to repeat after me. And this is you just confessing your, that, that you desire a relationship with the Lord. The Bible says that in Romans 10, 9, 10, that if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, then you will be saved. If you <laughs> confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that, the, that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. So let's do that right now. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for your love that you so freely gave to us. I confess that you are my Savior. I believe this in my heart. And I invite you into my heart to take up residence. I desire to start this relationship. Make me, mold me, make me brand new in your precious name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. For, for those of you that have made that decision for the first time, uh, please go, go, see, uh, go, go see the back table. We have a Bible for you. We have a, and, and stick around and meet some people. We'd love to walk this journey out with you. Uh, thank you guys for just giving me a chance to talk about Jesus. I'm going to pass it to Pastor Isaac now. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Uh, pray you guys have a wonderful Sunday. I uh, want to let you know next Sunday we are, we're going to be starting a new series, getting us ready for uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. I was kind of inspired as uh, Uriah was, was preaching. Uh, and the, the title of it, we're going to call it uh, Crazy Peace. And it's, it's going to be about how to have peace in the midst of craziness. Because I know Thanksgiving and Christmas can bring forth some craziness anyone, crazy families, crazy times, uh, and you could have peace in the midst of craziness. And so that's what we're going to learn about for the next few weeks. Uh, love you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and bring you peace. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. We'll see you next week.